Do you see the bug? Yes, there it is. That is a northern walking stick. Did you think it was just a twig? Walking sticks, or stick insects as some people might call them, are a group of highly camouflaged insects. They escape predation by blending into plant material. As their name suggests, they look just like sticks and may even sway back and forth to more closely resemble a twig moving in the wind. Depending on the species, walking sticks can grow from 1 to 12 inches long, with females usually growing bigger than the males. This northern walking stick is about 5 inches long. They have long, thin bodies, long antenna, and long, wobbly legs. Walking sticks are generally green or brown in color and are herbivores. They use their strong mandibles to consume leaves, the primary food in their diet. The walking stick's body structure and coloration resembles real twigs or branches so strongly that often birds and other predators do not notice them at all. Should a bird or predator grab hold its leg, the walking stick can usually escape. It just simply sheds part of its leg so it can get away. Amazingly, in due time, they can regrow the missing leg. A walking stick is a cool bug. This colorful critter is an azalea caterpillar. It is the larva of a moth. Azalea caterpillars belong to a group of moths called handmade moths. The adult moth is small and light brown with a wingspan of around one and three quarter inches. Azalea caterpillars appear on azalea shrubs in the southeast United States in August and September. The adult female moth lays lots of eggs on a limb that soon hatch, producing a cluster of little caterpillars. Like all caterpillars, they spend most of their time eating and growing. As they grow bigger, their color patterns change from green to purple to yellow striped caterpillars. Eventually, they grow into large black and yellow or white striped worms with red heads and legs. Azalea caterpillars can quickly cause lots of damage from eating so many leaves from the shrub. If found and disturbed, they often raise their heads and tails into the air so that their body is C-shaped. It is believed this defensive posture must scare off predators. They are bluffing and just trying to look scary. You can touch these babies. You probably have seen this bug scamper across the floor. It's a nasty cockroach. This is an American cockroach and it is the largest species of common cockroaches. It is a bad bug and a major pest. These cockroaches are found mainly in basements, sewers, steam tunnels, and drainage systems. They can also be found in large buildings such as in grocery stores, bakeries, and restaurants. They may be found anywhere food is prepared and stored. The American cockroach is rarely found in our houses, but its cousins, other types of cockroaches, can be seen in our homes. American cockroaches are also found in the outdoors. They live in mostly shady areas such as hollow trees, wood piles, and mulch. They are sometimes found under the roof shingles and in attics. These cockroaches may wander indoors in search of food and water or to avoid extreme weather conditions. Cockroaches are mostly active at night. They consume decaying organic matter, but they're also scavengers and will eat almost anything. They prefer to eat sweets. During the day, cockroaches, which don't like light, tend to hide and rest. American cockroaches can become a public health problem due to their association with human waste and disease. Look, here's another big spider. This brown spider is called a spotted orb weaver. Just like other orb weavers, this spider makes large webs that are very organized and resemble a circular grid. Spotted orb weaver spiders are most often found on houses and other buildings. They appear in late summer to early fall and may be discovered on porches or eaves of houses or barns. Amazingly, these spiders often build their webs in areas that not only support their webs, 
but are busy with insect activity. They somehow know to place their webs near outside lights so moth and other bugs will fly into their webs. These spiders may be spooky, but they are beneficial because they eat lots of insects. During the day, this spider may hide and rest near the web. They are most active at night. Adult females can be found sitting in the middle of their webs waiting for a visitor and snack. For example, when a moth gets caught in the sticky strands of the web, the spider senses or feels the vibrations in the web. It will then go and bite the moth and wrap it in silk webbing. Later, when it's hungry, the spider will eat its prey. Spotted orb weaver spiders may also be found in open woodlands with webs strung between trees or across a path. Watching them build their neat webs is quite interesting. This spider is also harmless and a good guy, but you may choose to admire it from a distance. This last insect is an obscure bird grasshopper. It too is a big and long grasshopper, reaching over three inches from head to wingtip. Females are bigger and are usually twice the size of the males. This grasshopper is part of a family of locusts and gets the bird name due to its ability to fly long distances. If discovered or frightened, they will take off and fly away several yards, often up into a tree or to hide in tall grass. Their long wings and strong flight sort of looks like a small bird. Grasshoppers will generally eat almost anything green. With their chewing mouth parts, they can eat and damage many different kinds of broadleaf plants. They really like shrubs and flowers. This one is eating ochre leaves in a garden. Besides flying away to avoid predators, obscure bird grasshoppers will use their long hind legs to kick and escape. They are even known to bite. This grasshopper is sometimes tough to see blending amongst the leaves. Once found, they are also hard to catch and tough to handle. Try sneaking up on it if you can. Catch it before it flies and gets away. That wraps up 4-H Bug Show number four. Hope you enjoyed those large insects and how about those creepy crawly spiders too. For more information on our 4-H programs, be sure to visit our website www.aces.edu or contact your local county extension office.